Hello, I'm James Mills and you're watching CatX TV broadcasting live from Princeton, New Jersey. The time is currently 11.30 a.m. in New York, 4.30 p.m. in London and 12.30 p.m. in Hamilton, Bermuda. Today is the 2nd of January, 2009. From all of us at CatX, we hope you had an enjoyable New Year and welcome to the first CatX TV broadcast of 2009. Firstly, some breaking news. Russian gas giant Gazprom has accused the Ukraine of stealing gas meant for other European countries. The Ukrainian side openly admits it is stealing gas and has no shame about it, a company spokesman said. The accusation came after Russia ceased shipments of gas to the Ukraine on Thursday amid a row over payments and prices. This is something we reported earlier this week. The Ukraine has insisted it will not interfere with gas transported from Russia to Europe through its pipelines. Breaking news coming from the UK. Two people are feared dead after their light aircraft crashed into overhead power lines of the West Coast Main Line in Staffordshire. The aircraft came down in Little Haywood near Stafford. It ended up between two branches of the rail route, missing the tracks. The crash has closed that part of the West Coast Main Line, disrupt disrupting travel between London Euston and Manchester Piccadilly. The Staffordshire, a Staffordshire p uh, police spokeswoman said, there are potentially two fatalities from the aircraft, but until further investigations have been carried out and families informed, we cannot give any more information. Anyone traveling in the UK? This is important news. Virgin Trains said services between London, Manchester, Glasgow and Liverpool were being diverted via Birmingham and Wolverhampton, adding 60 minutes to journey times. And now to our main news. Thousands of Palestinians in the West Bank have joined demonstrations after a call from Hamas for a day of wrath against the Israeli attacks on Gaza. Protests have also been held around about and around the Muslim world after Friday prayers. Medics in Gaza say more than 400 people have been killed in a week of raids. Today's protests were called after an Israeli airstrike hit the home of Nazir Rayan, a firebrand leader of Hamas who refused to go into hiding, killing him and several of his wives and children on Thursday. We will not rest until we destroy the Zionist entity, senior Hamas figure Fathi Hamad said at the funeral of 20 people who died in the attack. Meanwhile, about 100 foreign passport holders, mainly women married to Palestinians, and their children have been allowed to leave Gaza by Israel. In Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's military have seized control of the Tamil Tigers rebels' de facto capital in Kilinachichi. President Mahinda Rajpaksa has announced. The description he described the taking of the northern town as unparalleled victory for government forces. A pro-Tamil website confirms the news, but said the town was mostly empty as rebel fighters had moved out. A suspected suicide bomber later killed two airmen in the capital, Colombo, and military said. Correspondents say the loss of Kalonachichi will be a heavy blow to the rebel group. The town is a huge symbolic importance to the Tigers, who had assembled there the trappings of a separate state they want for the ethnic Tamil minority. The Sri Lankan army has for months been advancing towards the town which has been in the hands of the rebels for the last decade. Both sides have recently claimed they had inflicted heavy casualties on each other in the north of the island, but there has been no independent news, no independent reports from the front line and it is impossible to verify either account of casualties. And continuing with news upon fighting, up to 30 people have been killed in a suicide bombing in a town south of the Iraqi capital, Baghdad, police say. About 110 people were also injured in the attack at a gathering of Sunni Muslim tribal leaders in Yusufaya, 20 kilometers from Baghdad. Police said the bomber had entered the home of a sheikh as a Sunni council meeting was being held. The area was once an Al-Qaeda stronghold, 
but local Sunnis turned against the group in recent years. A number of tribal leaders or sheikhs are reported to be among the casualties. The council meeting was part of an initiative by Iraqi Prime Minister Nuri Maliki, a Shia, to reach out to the Sunnis. And across the world, down in Africa, a French warship has intercepted two suspected pirate boats off the Gulf of Aden and arrested eight Somalis on board. And this is coming from the French Navy. International naval patrols are credited with helping deter most recent hijack attempts off Somalia, with only two ships captured last month. But pirates still managed to hijack a cargo vessel with 28 Egyptian crew members on board on Thursday. Somali pirates still hold around 15 ships with more than 200 crew members. The suspected pirates were captured as they attempted to seize a Panamanian registered cargo ship yesterday, according to Christophe Brazuk, a spokesman for the French armed forces. Resistance was impossible when faced by a well-armed warship, Mr. Prazik told French television. He said the eight men who were found with weapons and munitions would be taken to Somalia for trial. And continuing with news coming from Somalia, EU naval forces have forced back pirates raiding a Greek oil tanker off Somalia, the Greek government says. Pirates in speedboats abandoned efforts to board a tanker when to board the tanker when a frigate, jet fighter and helicopter approached, the Greek Merchant Marine Ministry reports. The International Maritime Bureau says increased naval patrols have sharply reduced the number of pirate attacks. The Greek flagged Kriti Episkopi had been en route to Iran when it came under attack twice by pirates, officials say. The captain alerted the Greek ministry, which in turn contacted the headquarters of the EU naval mission in the operating area. There were two failed attempts to board, and the pirates fled after the crisis responded group was activated with a fighter aircraft, a helicopter, and a frigate sent to the area, a marine ministry official said. In Thailand, at least 59 people have been killed and 100 others wounded, in a fire at a nightclub in the Thai capital of Bangkok. Locals and foreigners were among more than 1,000 revelers packed into the Santika Club for New Year celebrations when a blaze broke out, quickly spreading through the building. The fire started at the club in the city's Ekamai, Ekamai district early Thursday morning. Valap Janthorn, a, fire, uh, a city fire coordinator officials said. The fire is under control and police are investigating to find out the cause, he added. He then went on to add that more bodies were thought to be in the fire gutted building and the death toll could possibly rise. As well as Thai nationals, the dead are thought to include a number of foreigners. Police officials said causes of death included burns, smoke inhalation and injuries during the stampedes to escape the club. The building had only one door for entry and exit, and bars across several of the windows made it more difficult to escape. The roof of the building collapsed as a result of the fire. Local television stations variously reported the causes of the blaze as a firework set off in the nightclub and New Year celebrations, and an electrical fault in the club. I'm sure Mill News will come out of this and will be able to possibly give you an indication of what the actual cause was later this week, or early next week actually. Anyway, we'll now go to a quick commercial break and a word from our sponsors. Every day, the world wakes up and goes to work, pursuing the unique opportunities that lead the global economy forward. The complexity and close connectivity of today's global marketplace is a true modern miracle that can create unparalleled success. But it takes confidence, passion, innovation, and understanding. Enabling opportunity. Protecting capital. Engineering innovation. Investing in your future. Ensuring continuity. 